everyone and welcome to another episode of the Takes from the Lakes podcast. I am James and I am joined by Nash. Uh, we had a couple topics to uh, go through today, but Nash, how are you doing today? Doing great. Unfortunately, this is kind of the dead zone of the sports, like the sporting world. I mean, after college basketball and NBA is one, but you know, I, I enjoy baseball, but 162 games in the season, just finished the All-Star break before the trade deadline. There's not a whole lot to talk about, so we're giving, bringing you some rankings today to go mm-hmm. along with what little news we have to discuss. Yeah. Um, but, um, and wait, Nash, did potentially you, a new segment. Yeah. Did you look up the keep trade cut? Did you look up the keep, keep yeah. trade cut? Okay, you did. Okay. Yeah, I'm but we're doing, we're doing that after our news. Yeah, no, I was just double checking because I forgot about it. But, oh. um, yeah, I so, uh, James. yeah, okay. We, we both do. Right. But Nash, uh, I'm kind of surprised you're wearing that jersey. It's a uh, Tyree Kill jersey. I know, it kind of hurts. Yeah, I'm it like, because you hate him now, don't you? Well, he's... No. He... You, uh, I think he's the reason we beat the Niners in yeah. the Super Bowl. But, like, at the same time, it's tough because he's a psychopath. And like <laughs> saying all admitting. these things, like saying all these things, like Tua is more accurate than more, like stop it, bro. Like I know, like what are you supposed to say? But just say yeah. no comment. Like okay, well that know. would be that would that would be also really bad if you said. Can you imagine who's better, Tua or your old QB? No comment. <laughs> That's not gonna. Everyone's gonna be like, oh, he's trashing Tua, blah blah blah. So I, I, think, uh, I mean, I don't care. It's so stupid. I guess I guess you should have said like. Oh, both these guys are special in their own ways. Blah blah blah. They're good in you know their <laughs> respective <laughs> aspect. But um, yeah. I mean, I don't know what to say. But also, he has a his. Yeah, I've never liked Harry Kill, so I I liked him less. Well, I guess I liked him. I still don't like him that much, but I liked him less than he's on the Chiefs, just because you know the Chiefs for God's sake. But um, yeah, I think we should just hop right into it. Uh, at first, we are starting with the new news that is going around the NFL. Deshaun Watson is suspended. For six games, not the whole season, not eight games, not ten games, not four, six games. The NFL has like I think three days to like appeal it and then maybe get um like change it or something like that. But I'm pretty sure it's just about a set in stone. I don't think it's gonna be changed. But um, what are your thoughts on the, the six game suspension for Mr. Watson Nash? I mean, for the game of football, I like. It. Mm. You know, it's. You know, you want to see a talented guy like that back on the field. Yeah. And good for the good for the views. The, it's uh, good yeah. for the game, but at the same time, it's bad for the players. I think. And bad because for the like, overall like. How do you how do you justify? And we don't have to get too into specifics. Yeah. This is a family friendly podcast, but he did terrible things. Like hmm. he is not a good person, and you know it's. It's hard to see guys like Calvin Ridley, who I think genuinely just made a mistake. Yeah. He gets suspended for the whole season. Yeah. And Deshaun Watson doing nefarious deeds, like, <laughs> only six games. I mean, I, yeah. I guess they didn't, like, charge him criminally, so there's only so much they can do. The civil but, like, lawsuit, yeah. I mean, they settled, settled the civil lawsuits with settlements, yeah. He hasn't yeah. been fined, though. Yeah. Which is nuts to me. And but he, he won't be, time, I'm pretty sure. At the same time, like, as horrible as it is, I'm very excited to see him back on the field. So it's yeah. it's tough. It's tough. Are you going to be rooting? You know? You're not going to be rooting for no, him, though. No, of course not. Yeah, no. Of course mm-hmm. not. But it's like, you just want to see good football. Yeah. And so I think, you know, I get where it's coming from. And I, if I'm a Browns fan, I'm ecstatic. Well, no. But it just depends. from a purely football perspective. Black out the off-the-field yeah, issues. It's, it's so <laughs> tough. But – you know, it is shocking, you know, yeah. that the, the punishment and suspension policy in the NFL seems so twisted. You know, Josh Gordon getting 25-plus games suspension. Or, yeah. You know. And, I mean, how many games? Yeah, Big Ben got six games for one incident of, you know, his shenanigans off the field, um, you know, many years ago. But, yeah, it's not, not really a great look overall for the NFL. And, obviously, we don't know exactly what happened, but you can well, kind of guess. Mean, and the NFL has a uh, kind of a track record. I mean, Tyreek Hill, 
Mm-hmm. Well, he did his in college, but yeah, um, well, it's just yeah, he did. You're right. Yeah, it's just kind of a hard thing. Like, yeah. I find I find I was thinking about today. I find the fact that they suspended Brady four games compared to the Sean Watson six games is just hilarious, dude. Like it's well, he like, cheated. I mean, you don't know the specifics, and he did it. But... He should have been kicked out of the league indefinitely. <laughs> well, either way, you can suspend Brady with for... ruining the integrity you can of sus- the game. Suspend, suspend Brady for ten games, and he'll still win the Super Bowl like he did in twenty sixteen. So, um, but um, yeah, I just Quiet. thought that was kind of funny. But I was even better how he won the Super Bowl. But you know, Roger Goodell, um, horrible, horrible commissioner. Um, I actually have a flag in my room that is like Roger Goodell with a clown like nose on it. Dude, it's so Roger funny. Goodell. Is the worst NFL commissioner we could have. I mean, the he's worst just commissioner terrible. in sport. Oh, that Rob Manfred, MLB commissioner, is pretty bad, but no, I mean, yeah, but he's really bad. But they're Adam both, I think Roger Goodell, Adam think, Silver's awesome. I, think I love Adam sh- Silver. I think we should just like understand how great Adam Silver is. Yeah, Adam Silver is awesome. Um, just like in general, off the, off the field stuff. I feel like he's he funky looking, dude. I, I can't look at him for more than a few seconds without feeling <laughs> something, Bro. but you know. <laughs> <laughs> but he's oh a great God. commissioner. Oh, um, no, he is great guy. And Roger Goodell is just like that, horrible. Man. Like yeah, honestly, Roger what did John like... Gruden say about him? Oh, I no. think we can't say it on this podcast. Yeah, but I, I agree with him. Yeah. Um. But yeah, not. I've never, I've never been a fan of Roger Goodell, and that the whole Tom Brady incident just made it even worse. Yeah, and and it was that, awesome how he was preventing yeah. presenting the Lombardi Trophy on the stage while everyone's booing him and stuff just and while they're like yeah i suspended him and we, mm. they still won the super bowl so um yeah yeah but but uh, yeah that, the, uh, he just doesn't handle these incidents very well no i mean to be how. fair i mean he's not the guy handling it but he's the guy that's represented as you know kind of I the mean, symbol of whatever like, issues like, the nfl makes he gets to take blame and i don't i don't feel bad about it's like that. it's like ronnie it's, with 2k like ronnie doesn't do anything he just gets blamed for everything because he's like the symbol of 2k <laughs> Well, okay, here's the problem. He promotes a game that's terrible. <laughs> yeah, so not as like, bad as Madden. So... Madden has to be the worst, dude. Madden, oh my, dude, oh my, Madden's the new so Madden, bad. I'm so upset because the new Madden, it looks so fun. And I know it's You're just going to be it. horrible. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, did they fix franchise it's... mode, though? I know I'm. it's still going to be so bad. Who's, who's, like... the, uh, who's the cover athlete? Did they announce it yet? It's uh, John Madden. Oh yeah, of course. I forgot. That's right. That's cool. That's cool. But that's the one thing they can get right. But um, yeah. I mean, I, it's also really rest annoying. In how... peace, by the way. Yeah. Rest also, in peace. Also, rest in peace, Bill Russell. Rest. Yeah. Rest wow. in peace, Bill Russell. That's so thing. sad. I, you know, he, I talk about a guy who like mm-hmm. did a lot. I mean, lot post of retirement off the too. Yeah. He, yeah. Like that man lived a playing cool life. playing back in the day in Boston. You know. Nah, Nobody I mean, cares about where he paid or won his championships. Yeah. He's a janitor merchant, but uh, rest okay. him, I mean, Bill Russell honestly, would still cook, dude. In yeah, today's dude. yeah. Bill he would Russell, still cook. Bill Russell He'd still be really good. For sure player of all time. Mm-hmm. Easily. Leads the leads the NBA in championships won. I mean he won eight tit- straight. A titan of modern basketball. Like Yeah. I mean, just so that was that was sad, sad news. But mm-hmm. yeah. with all eleven these championships, games, just insane, dude. We'll hope he can uh, rest well. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I I, I want to see the uh, maybe the Celtics will have like a little little patch in their jersey or something this year. Which would be pretty cool. Yeah, but I know they had yeah, one for Casey Jones. Was it? I think. Yeah, it was Casey Jones. I want to say it was Casey Jones this year, but um, yeah, so. Um. Yeah, that that's just cool. kind of that was supposed to just be about Deshaun Watson to kind of morph into a more general conversation of the world in sports. So, um, yeah, I think we should go in on go on and move on to the next segment. Nash, the keep trade cut. Oh yes, keep trade cut. Now better be good. We're working on. We have something in the works for some potentially two new unique segments that we hope could be really cool, really fun, but. Because you're still working on those, something that you might see a lot if you listen to other sports podcasts is keep trade cut, which is basically just a one. ranking of three players. Yeah. You're just ranking three players one to three, who you like the most, who you like the least, and well, yeah, and know. it's you're you're implying that 
if you had one to keep one trade one cut one you would do that or or you could do you could call it start bench cut yeah but it's the same it's the same premise you're yeah yeah, we'll we'll call our start bench cut because we're okay. doing NBA for the first time. Right. You're not you're NBA. not getting rid of two. So yeah. we've got Jalen Brown, mm-hmm. Bradley Beal, yeah, and Donovan Mitchell. Jalen Brown, Bradley Beal, and Donovan Mitchell. All right, I'll let you go first. Okay, who who are you starting? I'm starting, I'm starting Donovan Mitchell. I think it, that's that's pretty easy for me. I um, I wholeheartedly agree. I'm starting Donovan Mitchell, benching Jalen Brown, and a and I'm cutting Brad Beal. Brad Beal had did not have a good year last year, and he still got the bag, which is good for him. But it's did kinda, he average like thirty a game? That was two years ago. Last year, um, last year he averaged. Let's see, where is it on? Ben? Okay, it's over there. Last year he averaged twenty three on forty five from the field, like. He went 30 in 20, 2020, 31 points per game, 30 in 2020, 31 in 2021, and 23 in 2022. For We're talking about if we were having these players next year, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think he's he's not going to sustain the high points per game. He, he's old. He's what? I want to say he's 30. Um, Yeah, or he's going to be 29 next year. I do not. I think Bradley Beal might be a little bit on the decline, not nearly as much as yeah. Some people might think, but I would easily, easily start Donovan Mitchell, um, bench Jalen Brown. Both of them are really good players, but I think it's I think it's pretty easily Donovan Mitchell, and then I would um I would cut Brad Beal, but still all three. Are yeah, players. I mean it's hard because like Donovan Mitchell really hasn't had playoff success. Really hasn't played. To be all fair, he well. did go absolutely crazy in the bubble, like crazy, crazy, but he did blow a three one lead. Yeah, the bubble is like. The bubble is genuine basket. The bubble, the bubble. Okay, here's the thing about COVID sports, MLB, that should be thrown out of the window. That is not real baseball. Short season, completely different. The bubble, I think the bubble. There is a little bit of changes. Like obviously, no crowd. That's the main, pretty much the whole thing. But I still think the Lakers were the best team, and I think all the games were genuine and did show. Like, you know, yeah. I think but it they was were just pretty a close, lot though. of things were very like skewed. And especially in terms of like player performance, like TJ Warren, it, it, yeah, like, yeah, and I think it has a lot to do with like personality. Like a lot of guys kind of feed off the crowd, whereas like yeah, certain guys don't like the hype as much. It's like you're taking a Dejounte Murray versus like a Trey Young. Yeah, like can you imagine? Can you imagine Luca hitting that game winner at the Mavericks? <laughs> Or just in general, or even on the Clippers, like that would have been yeah. absolutely crazy. But yeah, I mean, it's like, anyway, mm-hmm. you know. So I think I'm. Starting, he's still good though, Donovan Mitchell. I'm like the, he's been really good since the bubble. Donovan Mitchell. Uh huh. Average twenty six last this year. This is where this is where it gets tough. What did mm-hmm. Jalen Brown average? I, I want mean, to say he's the number two option on that team. I want to say he averaged twenty two. Um, he averaged so like, last year was it was twenty three point six, so twenty four. I feel like he's just not quite as good. At, he's also not score. a good ball. Like he has good ball as handling Bradley moments, Beal. and he drops guys, but he's not a good ball handler. Like, like, I think I just feel like Bradley Beal is the perfect shooting guard. Okay, wait. So who are you starting, Donovan Mitchell? Donovan Mitchell. Just uh-huh. I mean, and his shooting is very underrated. Yeah. Um. And then I think I'm going to bench Bradley Beal. Oh, yeah. Just because, like, a great scorer, perfect for any team. So, yeah. Yeah. I like, mean, any team can use a Bradley Beal. I don't feel like Jalen Brown fits everywhere. Yeah. I just – sometimes Jalen Brown looks like he has literally no clue what he's doing on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah. Like and, like it's and he just has a dumb the dumbest turnovers ever. It's just like oh my god, and it's, it's crazy. You know, Jalen Brown and Bradley Beal are like this, like seriously, like so close. Like if you're ranking shooting guards, they're probably right next to each other. Yeah, and if account for like age or potential, like Jalen Brown wins. So it's hard. Like, don't get mad at me. 
But I just think Bradley Beal is a, such like a much more refined score. Yeah, I mean, he did average. They average the. I want. I think they average the exact I know. same. I know, but again, but whatever. It's... Next year, I just think Brad or uh, Jalen Brown is four years younger. He's gotten better every year. Every year of his career, he's gotten be- every year of his so career true. he's gotten better. So. I was, I just don't know about that. But, yeah, so I mean, next yeah. year it might be a different story. But. If Jalen Brown was on the Celtics, I'm taking Bradley Beal. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I see. I see it both ways, yeah. but I think okay. Brown Mitchell is a pretty. So easy now start, we but. have NFL rankings to get into. Yeah. Um. Do you want to take? We have top fifteen quarterbacks and top fifteen running backs for today. Don't want to mm-hmm. make it too extensive. Yeah. Um, and then we'll do obscure stat of the day. But do you want to do it in like threes? Threes, maybe, okay. Maybe do you, and do you want to count back from fifteen? I nah, like that. Idea. You want to count back? I like counting back. Well, no. Nah, yeah, we, I can like start with your. Uh huh. You can start with your honorable honorable mention. Oh, That's true. always fun. True. Okay. You want you want to start with running backs or quarterbacks? Uh, quarterbacks. Quarterbacks. All right, you go first. Honorable mention. All right. Honorable mentions. Mac Jones and Jalen Hurts. I mm-hmm. think both of them at the end of this year will be top fifteen. Um, but it. Just, I don't know if I've ever heard you praise Mac like that. Well, I don't. He's not like I don't think Mac Jones has the potential to be like a great quarterback. Well, yeah, I mean I agree with that. So I to think, be fair, last year, like. Some people t- are talk about him last year, like he was like really good. But I mean, I watched all their games, and I'm like, you know, he was good, but he wasn't really, you know, yeah. He hit some he nice was- throws, but he wasn't incredible. But I, I still think he can be really good. But and um, Jalen Hurts, I think the production will be just too much to ignore after this season. Yeah. But at at the same time, I don't think either of them are valuable enough to a team. To I think love. Mac will be better than Jalen Hurts his whole career. And then. Though. 15, uh, I'm going to go 15, 14, and 13, and then we'll, we'll switch off. Um, yeah. 15, I've got Baker Mayfield. I think, hmm. you know, played with a torn I like that. last year. It's just funny because I was praising him, and you were, like, crapping on him the other day, so I find that funny. <laughs> well, he's still not, like, good. Like, I don't know, I don't what, I don't know what you think I was talking about him, like he was a top 10 QB or something. Well, I think the top 13 – is like good quarterbacks, and I think like fourteen to twenty in the league today is like mediocre. Yeah, I guess. And so, you know, you can put Kirk Cousins here. You can put either Mac or Jalen Hurts here. You can even put Carson Wentz here. Did you put Carson Wentz at like, fourteen? No. Oh. No, um, but I think Baker is consistent, and I think Baker – I like Baker in Carolina actually a lot. Mm-hmm. I think Baker is going to have the chance to showcase his talent, and I think he's about as average as it gets in a good situation, which I think puts him at 15. And then 14, I've got Tannehill, who I think is severely underrated. Yeah, he's and and he, he just he had a really a bad playoff game. He plays really a role. Yeah, I I understand that, and he he's a role player despite being a quarterback, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And no more AJ Brown or Julio. Got Traylon Burks though, and Robert Woods. But he's got Traylon Burks. He's got Robert Woods, and got I got Nick Westbrook Aquina. You know, okay, stop, <laughs> stop talking. Um, you know. I think in a Mike Vrabel offense, he's just so consistent if you aren't taking into account the playoff game against the Bengals. He just, I mean, mm-hmm. he does his job. He executes perfectly. And he just, I mean, like what more could you want when you're putting a load on Derrick Henry and Tannehill can just make plays for you when you need him to? I think – that's why he's 14. And then you kind of step into a, a higher tier at 13 um, with Derek Carr. Mm. Um, led that team to the playoffs with very few weapons. 
He's a great thrower. He can improvise. Tears the Chiefs apart twice a year. Even His though we always sells play. him. His defense sells him. Um, yeah. but he's great. He's just not, you know. With Devontae, he, he might. He be just that doesn't. Guy. Have, he just doesn't have that star power. That like ability to make crazy plays. He just makes the right play every time. He's always been think, a average above average. I think average it's, it's so valuable, but he can't go higher than 13 for me. All right, so so what you got? All right, my honorable mentions are Kirk Cousins and Ryan Tannehill. Um, did you have Kirk Cousins as your honor- honorable mention too? No. Oh, okay. I mean, I considered putting Wentz, Tannehill, <clears throat> or sorry, Wentz, Cousins, Mac Jones, and Jalen Hurts in mm. the top 15, but Jeez, that would have been – anyways. um, Yeah, I got uh Tannehill and Kirk Cousins as my honorable mentions. I have Mac Jones at 15. Um, Like I said, you know, didn't – he did a lot of – he did a lot of good things last year, but did nothing too crazy. I think with Josh McDaniels not as the offensive coordinator, he'll be a lot better next year. Um, He's a lot yeah. better weapons. The offense in general is just Potentially better. no offensive coordinator. Well, our offensive coordinator no, – I mean – I mean, there. Bill Belichick said he's not announcing yeah. one, but it's it's Matt Patricia, um, from what I've seen, which doesn't really make sense because he's a defensive guy. But obviously, I don't know anything about um, him just in general. So, um, by the way, I I didn't I didn't mean that I was gonna put Cousins, Hurts, Mac Jones, and uh, Wentz all in the top oh. of the team. I just I debated the like Mayfield and those oh. four guys for the like the last spot. Oh, okay, all right. Anyways, yeah, Mac Jones, 15. I think will be a lot better next year. Got Tyquan Thornton, traded for Devontae Parker, Kendrick Bourne, and Jacoby Myers, uh, upcoming receivers. You know, I think it'll be a still lot better. Still bad, but better. Still, he still needs that guy, but I think one of those guys can be that guy. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I've seen a lot of good things from Tyquan Thornton, Thornton in camp as well. So, uh, 14, I have Jameis, Jameis Winston. He was pretty good last year whenever he um, played before he tore his ACL. I don't think that Tower and ACL will really play that much of a part um, in, affecting, in, in affecting his play, but he's got a pretty good offense. They got Chris Olave. They have Michael Thomas coming back, Jarvis Landry, obviously. Um, I just think he's in a pretty good position to succeed. And he really he cut down on the, he cut down on the interceptions last year, and that's what he really needed to do to be good. So I do think uh, full season Jameis could be a lot better than people think. Um, but yeah, four, I- or, uh, mm-hmm. That's just crazy. Like, I love Jameis, but, like... Cool. I don't as a person, but as a quarterback, I do. Dude, anyway. he eats Ws. Dude, yeah, he's funny. I'm not, I'm not even going to lie with you. But yeah, um, so I, I like that, but I also, like, wouldn't personally do it. But I, I respect Okay, well, that. good thing we're not the same as that person. 13 we is are, Derek we're Carr. The same person. 13 um, is Derek Carr. He carry, He literally carried the Raiders last year. Their yeah. team, dude, <laughs> that team, their head coach, obviously John Gruden, you know, not the greatest guy, you know, left in the middle of the season because of that. Darren Waller was hurt. His number one guy was Hunter Renfro. He was pretty good, but he had basically nobody else other than that. Um, Hen- or, Well, he had Henry Ruggs, and obviously Henry Ruggs is in jail now. Whoa. Um, ah, Just did everything going against speed. him. Just did everything going, going against him, and he still made the playoffs and had, and had a chance to beat the Bengals. That's just like I don't know. That just went went a long way for me respecting him as a person, as a player. But like, so I do think with Devontae Adams and that college connection, he could be really good. But so that's my uh, bottom three in the top fifteen. But yeah, it's like I think with Derek Carr, if you look at his stats, if you look at like all quarterback stats and like production and winning and all all those things, and you just don't have the name up there, or like you can't watch any film. Derek Carr is like top ten. Yeah. But but it's just like Derek Carr just isn't a top ten guy. Yeah. For whatever reason. He just like he's not there for me. Yeah. So next three, uh twelve. Probably get through is a little bit faster. Eleven and ten. We spent um, like five minutes just doing the bottom three, by the way. So Yeah. <laughs> I've got Dak Prescott at twelve. Great thrower, but his teams don't perform. Um you know, I think ever since the ankle injury, his mobilities it's not bad, but it's not like an asset of his. Um, if uh-huh. that makes sense. Yeah. 
I think he has a questionable deep ball at times. Dak? Yeah. I guess. At times. At times. Mm-hmm. And he, he questionable decision making at times. Other yeah. times he's like super consistent. But like, when he's on, he's actually like crazy good. Like crazy But he good. just the team doesn't perform all the time. The coaching's bad. I, I think he's got a lot of stuff going against him, but he it seems like he compounds issues a lot and he he can be a detriment to that team. And so, you know, you think of him as this consistent guy because, like, he always produces. But, like, in terms of the team winning, like, it hinges on him and Zeke's performance. And, like, they both – the both of them are very inconsistent. Okay. Um, and then I got Matt Stafford. Fresh off a Super Bowl win, but – and everybody's got him higher. I'm very low on him, but he just – Again, he's just not, for me, a top 10 arm. You know, mm. the mobility is not there, which you kind of need in a modern quarterback. Um, he can get, he can scramble, but he's not, he definitely doesn't have the legs on him as a lot of other guys. And yeah. he also, you know, great arm talent, but, you know, forces the ball to Cooper Cup a lot and does doesn't like, like, I think his track record. But it's fine if you force the ball to Cooper Cup because they just won the Super Bowl. Oh well, no, no, I know, but it's just like I don't think he, I don't think he was the playmaker on that team. I think. Uh, yeah, I got. He, I think he did his job. And, well, Tom Brady's never the playmaker, and he's won seven Super Bowls, so. And and made the throws that he needed to make, but like the production wasn't crazy, especially outside of Cooper Cup. It wasn't the playoffs. That's true. But, you know, I, I just don't think Stafford is – especially because okay. you can't just go based off of last year. Mm. Like, you kind of got to look at career as a whole. Yeah. And I think, you know, bad situation in Detroit, but just not – like, he would have never been a top – well, I mean, I guess he would have, but he would have been not in the top ten, really. Because he had never seen Detroit. But, yeah. So we saw him play, but I still – I'm not as high on him as a lot of people. Okay. And then at, at 10, I've got Tyler Murray. Mm. Um, Just think he's super talented. It's like the, the debate between him and Stafford is that, like, Stafford won Stafford. But, like, Murray's production and some of the throws that Murray makes are just, like, on another level. Like, Stafford was making the throws, but not – nothing nothing crazy. Whereas yeah. I think Murray's a legitimate playmaker, and that's that that's just so valuable in the modern NFL. Mm-hmm. Uh, just signed a new contract. I think if they can work past, work through some of their late season struggles, I think Kyler Murray takes it to another level. I think he's like the next Russell Wilson type of a guy. Yeah. Great deep ball as well. So I think I think that's that's where I stand on Kyler. Okay. All right. All right. Twelve I have Deshaun Watson. Um, oh. bro hasn't played in a year almost two years now. Or uh, that's not really true. It's like I guess it's a year and like whatever, four months, but year and a half, let's say. Bro hasn't played a year and a half. I just don't you just can't tell. I'm not, obviously he was very good when he played, but just the fact that him him not playing, uh, it's just I don't know. And there's been a lot of guys that have ascended up the rankings while he's been out. So I'm just not gonna say too much about him. I'll wait till he actually plays, and he's not even gonna play until week seven. So you know, still I'll have him ranked low until I actually he actually proves to me that he can still be that guy, that 230 million guaranteed guy. Um, number eleven is uh I was about to say Zach Wilson, but obviously not. It's uh Russell Wilson. He is number eleven. He's you know. Last couple of years in Seattle, he's been on the on the decline. He has not been nearly as good as he has been, you know, back in, you know, 2014, 2015 years. So I just don't think he's going to be nearly as good as the, as those uh, past years in Denver. But with those weapons, maybe. But still, just all the guys I have above him have proved to me that they can consistently be good and that they are better than him. And then nine is Dak. Um, I think Dak is honestly a little... Oh, yeah, sorry. 10 is Dak. I think Dak is uh, a little bit underrated. People underrate him a little bit too much. 
Um, I mean, he had a really good year last year, and he obviously was having a really good year in 2020 before he destroyed his ankle. But, um, I mean, you know, this year I think he could be really be really good with CD and obviously Zeke and Tony Pollard, a good running back duo. Michael Gallup, they just extended. So I think he is, a, he is a bit underrated in that. He does have – when he's on, he can he looks like a really good quarterback. And especially in that, you know – they're, I guess they're a little bit better with the Eagles, but in that, you know, Commanders and uh, Giants, the Cowboys can be a little bit better, and because it, and that can be because of him. So, um, that's my that's my twelve through ten. All right, so at nine, I've got um Russell Wilson. I think, you know, he's not the top five guy that he used to be, but I think a lot of his like so called decline last year was a product of Pete Carroll's sort of decline hmm. and, you know, bad defensive play, battle line. Or that play. he messed up his finger. Messed up finger. Like, there, there was a lot Wait, of did he stuff. come back at the end of the year? I don't remember. I forget. But I don't, I don't think it would have mattered. I think he would have played pretty mediocre. But I think the te- one of the best deep ball throwers in the league. He did come back, yeah. Um, great. Oh, he played a lot less. He only got hurt like a couple weeks. Great at escaping the pocket. Still had production despite like some struggles. Mm-hmm. And I think like he is due for a bounce back in a great system in Denver. And uh, yeah, so I have him, him at nine. And then at uh, eight, I've got Joe Burrow. Um, Okay. I think Joe Burrow coming off an appearance in the Super Bowl. Also, oh, one one thing, team. one thing. Russell Wilson passed over for over three hundred yards once last year. I think that's a product of Pete Carroll not being a good coach. Well, he's been a Pete Carroll his whole time, his whole career. So. Well, I think Pete Carroll was horrible last year. Like people used to think Mike McCarthy was a good coach in Green Bay. For a few years, people were. Cowboys won like twelve games last year, or eleven. A coach, a coach can decline too. I know it can. Coach, I know they can. A but... coach, a coach's like schemes can start. Mike McCarthy, is, like, the Cowboys literally were a play. They won their division last year. They're a playoff team. They're not even a bad team. Because they were so much more talented than every other team in that division. Um. Anyways, okay. uh, Joe Burrow coming off a Super Bowl appearance played great in the playoffs. Just it played great in what was it week seventeen against the Chiefs? Yeah. Um. End of the Chiefs season. I think. I think he's still yet to prove a lot in a full season. Like he wasn't great at the beginning of the year. He was mediocre, not including week seventeen off. Wait, and, what? You said he was mediocre, not including week seventeen. Well, he was good, but he uh-huh. wasn't like he. People are calling him like top six, top five. I think he was about. Do you remember what 10. he did against the, the freaking Ravens both year both weeks? Okay, a few good or a few great performances aside, everybody has great performances occasionally. He passed her over three hundred yards six times. Okay, that's a. I think he. I think for the like the rest of the season not week 17 on, I think he was about a top 10 guy. Okay. And well, then from the... week 17 on, he was like top six, top five. But in so the playoffs think... he played, that's in the playoffs is where people were like, oh, okay. Well, no, I know. And and so that's why I have him an eight. I think there's a lot of guys ahead of him. I think he's getting bumped down one because of Deshaun Watson. Um, and yeah, I think he's great. I think there's – he can improve upon it, especially with the great roster he has. I don't think he's an elite, elite, elite level guy yet. Um, seven, I've got Deshaun Watson. You know, hasn't played in a while, like James said, but the talent is unmistakable. Was a top five guy for me before the suspension. Yeah. He was probably, he was like three or four, I think, for me. He was amazing. People were talking about him in conversations with Patrick Mahomes, which yeah. 
shouldn't have happened, but if the if the Texans it, were good, he would he he would be you know, but they were four and twelve, so he reflects that conversation. It, it reflects you know how amazing he is that he was in those conversations. I know he hasn't played in a while, still quite young. The arm talent's great, the escapability is great. He's a top seven guy. Okay. Um. Let's see. I am. It's nine. Th- what is it? Nine through seven. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Number nine for me is Kyler Murray. Um, like Nash said, just the ability to move and just move in the pocket and obviously in the open field is just crazy to me. Might be one of the most elusive guys. Maybe with uh with Lamar, he might be the most elusive quarterback in the league. I just think that really goes a, goes a ways and just showing how good he is. Obviously, he's got uh paid as well. Number eight is Stafford, although Kyler, too, you know, second half last year kind of crumbling. He was the MVP candidate the first half of the season. I don't really know how he's going to bounce back from that next year, and the Cardinals' offense really doesn't look great to me with D-Hop out. Um, just Rondo Moore is whatever. Marquise Brown is whatever. James Conner is, you know, I guess pretty good, but I don't know. But that offense just... looks great, like, when Hopkins is back, I think that offense looks great. Like, Marquise Brown is a number two guy. Rondo Moore is a three. You've got the old and the young tight end. James Conner out of, like, with Hopkins, that offense is crazy. I mean. I think it all fits perfectly together with Hopkins. So. I mean, last year, DeAndre Hop- how many games did D Hop play last year? He was bad last year. Yeah, last year, D Hop was actually horrible, so. Guys are afforded a bad year. I don't. I, I think people are but so when D Hop is like on. but when D Hop is thirty whatever uh you know, thirty something years old. How old is he? He might be twenty nine. He's thirty years old. I just don't know, man. Coming off people sixteen. People are so years, quick man. to move on though. I don't know. Well, I'm not moving on, I'm just saying. Anyways, Kyler nine, Stafford is eight. He actually went crazy in the playoffs. The divisional game against the Bucks went crazy. Um championship game played all right. Second half, or I guess I'd say the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl was crazy. Um, obviously that connection with Cooper Cup. I'm not taking his connection with Cooper Cup away from him because he's literally, you know, half of it. So I'm not just gonna say, oh, he's Cooper Cup, blah blah blah. You know, he's the one throwing him the ball and putting Cooper Cup in a good spot yeah. to succeed. So you know, I'm just saying. That's, that's fair. What I'm just saying. That's but, fair. Um, yeah. Uh, seven is Lamar. I mean, he was injured last year. He was injured last year. And when he passed in the ball last year, he really wasn't great either. I mean, remember the Browns game on Monday Night Football, I think it was? Might have, it might have been Sunday Night. It was Monday Night or Sunday Night Football. Bro, it was just – or not, bro. It was Lamar and Baker just going back and forth throwing picks, and it was just a horrible game. And Lamar, like, yeah. this last year, he wasn't – I mean, like I said, you can, he really was not that great last year. I mean, even though the, the, um, the Ravens were winning games, it's just like – I don't know. So man. you've got the former MVP over or behind Joe Burrow. The former MVP. It doesn't matter. He won MVP in like a million years ago. Uh, yeah. Last year, okay. dude. Last well, year, Brown. That Browns game, twenty for thirty-two, one hundred sixty-five yards, one touchdown, four picks. Okay. Ow. It's there's some bad performances. Mahomes had some bad performances. You want me to so name like, another bad performance? Josh Allen lost to the other Josh Allen. Like, uh, they scored six points in that game. It, know, it, 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 it happens. But anyway. Putting him at seven it, isn't like saying he's horrible, dude. No, I'm still I know, he's really I know. good. Just put it, putting, him, putting him. Burrow had such Burrow a much. Me, Burrow was so sense. much better than Lamar last year. So much better. Lamar was hurt. Blood, yeah, I know. Like, but even, I even know. when he was hurt, Lamar was, or Burrow was better than Lamar. Yeah. All right, just go. What's your top six? Just All go. Right, just six, give me your six. I've yeah. got Tom Brady. Okay. Great production last year. I'm not taking away what he's done. It's just eventually the age is gonna catch up to him. He almost retired like twice last season. Twice. Um, wasn't I? I don't oh, understand gosh. what happened. He retired and then he just retired, retired. Then he came back. But then yeah, well, he almost retired regardless. I'm and pretty sure it's his last season. You think it's his last season? I don't know, but 
clearly there was something to suggest he might not be playing again. Him so retiring, I mean, him retiring and then coming back has nothing to do with anything. I, if I anything, think if anything, it shows he has more drive to win. I think it has a reflection on like how his talent might be progressing, or in this case, regressing. And not to say that he's going to like hit a wall and not be good. He's a great player, but he's the greatest player. But he he's in a he's got so many weapons. Like I don't I don't feel like all the production is offensive stack. It's him, offensive stack, and he's not. You know, he's not the playmaker. He's not the great arm talent. He's, he's not never the been escape the playmaker. Ability. He's never been the great arm talent. And he's always been great. He's been matter. a playmaker before. I don't I don't care. The, some of those throws he made prime yeah, Tom Brady were unreal. He's just not projecting him to next season. I don't love him. And I don't think he you're would. Saying, you're saying Tom Brady's going to decline. Is that I what think, I'm hearing? I think, I think when you watched him play, Last season, last he had year, great he, games, and he had some really like some stinkers. Last year, and Tom Brady some, barely missed winning MVP, and he had some throws where it was like, "Okay, Tom, you're getting a little old there, buddy." He literally and, barely lost MVP to. He had forty three okay. TD. He was first in TDs and yards. Okay, you can keep arguing with me. He's still great. I just think there's. I think he's six. I, I don't think he cracks the top five. I don't looking I at his game log. I think one. he's elite. I don't think he's like unbelievable top tier talent anymore. Like uh, looking at his game log, he had one bad game and that was that the nine and nine to game. nothing game against the Saints. What about the game against the Packers where he threw a bunch of picks? The Packers. They didn't was that two years ago? Year. That was two years ago. That was that wasn't that was Rodgers that threw all the picks. They the the Bucks beat the Packers in the regular season two years ago. <laughs> they beat them I'm twice. I'm losing my mind. Okay, I'm my your mind. your Brady take is wrong. All right. No, my Brady, Brady take is not saying. wrong. Brady is. Sick. You're saying Tom Brady is gonna decline next year, dude. <laughs> I'm not saying he's Tom he's Brady. Sick. He's not the. He's not the Just best he, player in the league. He's I not, never said he was. Just because he's, he's not as the good talent. as Rogers. He's never had the, the talent. Arm, the arm talent of all the guys I have above him and some of the guys I have behind him is not close to as good. As Brady? He makes the throws. He's as high as he is right now because of his greatness, his longevity, and his and stack he's still offense, good. And his ability to get production off a of check. Down. Like, he's, oh. he's good. He's not. Oh my God! He's not right, the top level talent that he a used to be, and b like is. Wait. All right. So you like, said is compared to these other guys, and then I've got Jackson at five, Lamar at five. That's yeah. gonna make you angry. That I have Lamar over Brady. Huh? Lamar over gonna... Brady? Where do you have Lamar? I have Lamar at five. Um. Lamar at five and then Brady at six. I I still like Brady. Like I think Brady is a tier above Watson at this point. I think the next like Brady is the bottom of a tier, but like I think he's still in the top tier of guys. He's just at like the arm talent takes it like is a subtracting factor. And we're measuring talent, not Tom like Brady, performance. Tom Brady was first on intended air yards yet yeah, last season. And you're saying he got all of his stats off checkdowns. For what? He was first in air yards. So that the amount of the distance that the ball goes in the air when you're throwing it, that is... It's because his receivers are nuts. What? It's because his receivers are open downfield every play. Hold on. It doesn't mean he's still not checking the ball down. It means he's throwing the ball a ton. He still is. He's not checking the ball down every own. They're not guy. handing the ball off. People are still point. saying this in 2022 that Tom Brady's pat- checking the ball down. That's crazy. I'm not saying he's just a checking the ball down. I'm saying he's not top tier thrower. <laughs> he's six. He's six yes, the best in the league. That's the reality. <laughs> First and completed he's air six. yards. <laughs> Intended air yards. He what was 
Air, what what was he in actual air yard? First. <laughs> pass yards. Okay, listen to this. Pass yards after catch. So like yak. This is the yak after catch. So the receivers get the ball and they run. He was eleventh. He wasn't even top ten. Listen to this bias. I'm not. You were talking what? to me about being biased. I'm just stating the facts because it's just crazy that people still hate on Tom Brady's pass. I'm not hating on Tom Brady. 2022. I'm not hating on Tom Just sitting his all Brady. stuff off a check down. This is crazy this is to me. Ridi- I, said, right. I did not say he gets you all said, stuff you said off Brady, a check down. You said Brady, Lamar, and then who? I've got, Bra- I've got Lamar because he's an elite talent. More talented than Brady right now. Okay. Brady's as, never been the most talented in the league. Brady has never been the most talented player in the league ever. Exactly. So he's at six. The this isn't the talent rankings. This is the best QB rankings, bro. <laughs> Two completely different things. If you put any of the five guys on the Bucks, they're all performing better than Brady. Lamar is not. Oh my God, Lamar. <laughs> Lamar is not. Aaron Rodgers Lamar is not. Lamar is. They're they're they all okay. Lamar Jackson, elite talent. Had a bad <laughs> he can't throw year. the ball. Yes, he, he can. can. Oh, not nearly as much as he can with as Brady can. Not nearly as much. He's like a Brady, and he can run, and he doesn't throw the ball quite as well. You're saying he can. He's you're saying like he can Brady, throw the ball just as good as Brady. He's also fantastic at checking the ball down. So you're saying he can throw the ball just no. as good as Brady. That's literally what you just said, bro. All right, who do you have? You have Brady. This you have guy. Brady, Lamar, and then who? And then Rogers, two-time MVP. Rogers is four. Crazy huh. arm, unbelievable improvisation. You talk about two time, two time, two time MVP. Okay, you were questioning me so much. With uh, I have six is Burrow, so Herbert is five, and Allen, Josh Allen is four. What? Josh Allen? Is... Yeah, you got Brady ahead of Josh Allen. Look at the stats. Brady was better in almost every category last year. Oh my gosh, bro! Look at the stats. Look at the stats. Okay, then don't. I don't care. All right, bro six. I like I said, bro six. Herbert five. Watch the game. I didn't. I didn't want. I watch all the games. I didn't want to put Her- Herbert at five, but um, I just. I still love Herbert, but I still think top five is pretty God, good for him. Bro. Allen three. Allen Allen what's your top three? Four. Or Allen four. Yeah. What's your top I've three? I've got Herbert three, Allen two, and Mahomes at one. Okay. I think. I'm... I think. I think Herbert throws. So he or Herbert is like Aaron Rodgers, but he's in the prime of his career right now. Okay. And so I think that's the, the separation. I think Allen is just a unicorn, and Mahomes is the most talented football player to ever play. Not not by like he's uh, Mahomes does things nobody else has ever done. Okay, Brady three, yeah. Rodgers two, Mahomes one. Let's move on. All right. Okay. Um. He's mad about my. You okay. just let's just me and just get on with stuff. All right. How uh, how how long how long is the podcast running? We're at like fifty minutes almost. Okay. All right, running back rankings. I'll go, you first. go first. All right. Uh, hold on. All right, running back rankings. I have two honorable mentions: Josh Jacobs and AJ Dillon. Um, are, are my two honorable mentions. I had AJ Dillon in my top fifteen. Then I then I uh, I think he's one of the better running uh, power backs in the league, and then I took him out of there. Josh Jacobs has always been all right. He had a really good rookie year, but since then he hasn't been nearly as good. Uh, Eli Mitchell is 15, really good last year. Tony Pollard, I think he's uh, – I do have Zeke above him, but I think he can be – I think, you know, if he got the amount of carries as Zeke, he'd be much better than Zeke, and it'd be pretty easy to say that. Um, but I've uh, – yeah, Pollard at 14. Rashad Penny at 13. He couldn't be stopped. Uh, 6.3 yards per carry last year. Could not be stopped the last five games of last season. I'll pull up the game log um, to just say – how many yards he had last year, but just literally could not um, – had like 800 yards and he played like half the season. Last five games of last year, 137 and two touchdowns. Yeah, 137 and two touchdowns. Had one pretty bad game, 40 yards. And in the last three games, 135 for one touchdown, 170 for two, and 190 for one. That's just crazy. Absolutely crazy. And then before that, he did not – he got literally no carries the whole season or he was injured, so – once he gets actual carries and once he stays healthy, he'll be solidified as one of the better running backs in the league. But you can go on. Now. Rashad Penny. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I I don't I don't you, hate Rashad Penny. 
You just not, don't you just don't like putting him high because he's not a big name guy. That's your thing. Well, and the production isn't there yet. He was great in the latter half of last year, but it's like. Then why does it matter what he did in previous years? It doesn't matter. Like like you just can't justify putting Tony Pollard and him above Saquon. Saquon no, no, was horrible last year. Saquon was really bad and dealing with and can't stay healthy. Easily, I'll put him above Saquon. Easily, I love Saquon, like, but easily. That's crazy. Saquon is just more talented. It's not about talent. It's about who's a better running back. Saquon's full potential is when he's healthy, when he has a good O line, and when he can actually run the ball efficiently. But he can't right now. Maybe he can in the future, but he can't. Just because he's more talented doesn't mean he's a better running back. Go on. Okay. All right. My honorable mentions are Elijah Mitchell, because I think it's just so close with him. Um, and then another honorable mention is Bijan Robinson when he gets drafted in the NFL out of Texas, which, which he will next until year. Until a year from now, so nobody um, cares. He will be a immediately a top 15 running back. No question. No question about it. Um, He's just a mega talent. Okay, who's your um, top 15? Top 15. 15, I've got Zeke. Bad last year. Efficiency not great, but he had 1,000 yards, right? The touchdown production was good. So it's just – it's hard to take him out of the top 15. Despite, you know, when you watch the games, you're like, oh, wow, Zeke is playing terrible. Uh, 14, mm. I've got Josh Jacobs. Again, he kind of was – Hurt a little bit last year. He played with some injuries. He wasn't great, but had a great rookie season, and he just flashes the potential of being like a hybrid power and elusive back. If he can start to catch the ball more out of the backfield, that would like he just he's an ideal running back. Mm. And then thirteen, I've got James Conner, simply because he was. You know, I don't I don't love the player. Like, I don't love the way he plays. But with Kyler last year, he was just fantastic. The production I mean, was good. The efficiency was, was touchdowns, good. basically. Well, he, he produced. He all the red year. zone touches. 3.7 yards per carry. Last year, that man made plays. He was a large reason at, as to why the offense was like produced so well and was efficient. Like there's just not much more to say. Mm. Okay. You know, I, 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 I'm with you that like I don't love the player, but the production last year was too good to ignore. Okay. Is that your bottom uh, your is that your fifteen yeah. through thirteen? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, my twelve through ten, I have Zeke at twelve. Um he just gets a lot of uh he did have actually did not have that bad of a year last year. He had I wanna say a thousand yards, ten touchdowns, so I was hating on, on him a little bit until I saw his stats. Yeah. I was like, okay, he wasn't nearly as bad as I thought. But, you know, he just got so much, yeah. obviously, well, horrible contract. He gets so much, uh, so many carries. So many well, carries. yeah, it's like, if you if you look at his PFF grade, it's probably not good. Like, watching the game. I thought you know game, based off of stuff off of PFF grades. When did I say that? You say that. This, you literally dude, said that. This guy. When we were just, talking about when we were talking about I Trayvon Diggs, we looked at that. I looked at PFF and you're like, oh, PFF doesn't matter or whatever. All right. I said you can't base everything off of PFF, but I'm just making. I still had him at 15, but it's All I'm right. just making the case that you know when you like I watched a lot of those games because I followed the NFC East because my dad's a big uh, Commanders fan, mm. so. I watched a lot of those games, and you're just watching him play. It plus the AFC West had uh, the East last year, yeah. So I saw him play a lot, and he just didn't look good. Like you watching yeah. him play, I mean, I agree with you. like whoa. It, anyway, oh, yeah. continue. Eleven is um, Eckler. Everyone says he's mm-hmm. overrated, I so he's not that. overrated every anymore. Um, because literally everyone says it, where it's just the point where it's not like everyone knows it, so he's not overrated. But um. Yeah, I mean, he's still – he's really not that bad. I think he's a good running back for the Chargers. Gets a lot gets a lot of touches, and uh, he produces with those touches, but he's nothing nothing special. And then 11 – or uh, 10 is Javante Williams. He broke, like, the most tackles in the league last year and still wasn't even the number one running back in, on his team. But I've seen – from what I've seen in camp, he has 
um, gotten the number one running back touches. He's played with the first team. Melvin Gordon has kind of taken a back seat. So I'm excited to see if the rest of tra- in the rest of training camp that plays out the same way. And um, I'm looking, hopefully he has a huge year this year. And when he was the RB1 last year, when Melvin Gordon was hurt for just a couple of games, maybe it was only one game. I remember he was really, really good. So yeah. I'm excited to see yeah. what happens with him this year. Um, 12, I have Saquon. You know, I know he wasn't good last year. Production the last few years, even with, you know, being plagued by injuries, hasn't been horrible. I think he just needs to, you know, I think the offensive line is coming along. I think this year is the year where we see if it was the rookie year that was a fluke or if he's just been having some bad luck. But um, I think I think Saquon has the potential to be – a great player. I don't again. know if he's gonna be good enough. I hope he is, but I just don't know what that horrible. And I think I think the talent yeah. that we see every year is enough to justify like putting him top ten at least for now at, in in preseason when it like... seems like things are finally falling right for him. And then Eckler, I have him at eleven, like you. I think it's the same thing. I I still think he's overrated. Just watching. Well, you're like, just he, not. You're just not well, around he, NFL the production as much as is, I am. So, well, no, I I think the issue is that he just can't run the ball. Like the production is great out of a running back, and it justifies it being an eleven. But any higher as the running back just isn't fair because he isn't a runner. He's mm-hmm. a pass catcher primarily. And then ten, I've got Javante Williams as well. So good last year. You just want to see him get more reps. Um, yeah. And if he does, I think he'll blossom even into even greater than that. But like even going back to college, he, you just you can just tell he's a such a solid, consistent runner. Yeah, I agree. Um, that's crazy that Michael Carter and Javante at the same time. That I always just find that crazy. But um, and who is I, their wide receiver? Um, for in UNC. Yeah. Josh Downs or the other guy or another guy. Surratt. Huh. I think it was Sage Surratt. Sage Surratt? He was good. I think he was. He's great. Anyways, okay. Nine through seven for me. Nine is Aaron Jones. Um, I think he's a great, great third down back. He's been great pretty much every year. Not Maybe not every year's career, but he's been great the past couple of years. Um, eight is Najee. Wasn't really Did you that... hear that thunder? Uh, we don't live no, close hasn't got to, my house yet, to each I other. Think, but, that was um, wild. I did briefly hear it, but... um. What was I saying? Eight is Najee. He wasn't the most efficient runner last year, but I still think that um he did show a flash of the talent. And that he does have it. He also had a horrible O line last year, like one of the worst in the league. But they did improve that O line and he does have the talent. Great power back. Great power back and a great third down back, which is kind of everything you want in a running back. So obviously a great receiver out of the back. Okay. This, is, this is breaking. Um, Frankie Montes and Luke yeah, Trevino. No, I, saw that. Okay. I wasn't. Okay. I was gonna maybe say that. Then we can we can we can mention it at the end. Real quick. All yeah, right. Okay. Real quick. All um. Right. Uh, real we quick. have and like. Then, yeah. Who's a seven for you? Uh, Dalvin Cook. Underrated. Wow. Wow. You have him underrated at seven. I mean, yeah. yeah. Okay. Wow. That thunder was nuts. All right. Let's get on with this next. Um. Let's just okay. okay. You give me your nine to seven. And I'll get my top okay, six. So and you our give me our eleven through eight were like the same so oh, nine God. i have aaron jones i think the production has been great under aaron Rodgers. great pass catcher he does Wait, we have everything. the exact same oh 11 yeah oh. and then Najee harris at eight hmm. you know he didn't look good a lot of times when we were watching him play but the talent is they, they force fed him they force fed he's, him the yeah last he's year. he is a complete running back getting so much so many touches. He's back. He could work he's on his vision dest- a little bit. He's destined to improve. It's hard to see holes when they don't exist. I mean, but there's but been yeah. there's been moments last year where his vision, like you're just like, why are you going that way? Like I remember yeah. there's this one play where he could like he could have easily gone up the middle and he like bounced it outside and got like tag of like a three yard loss. He does like, Wait, what are you doing? Bounce it outside. Yeah, like dude, you can um, run up the middle, you know. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Um, let's and go. In seven. I have Mixon. You know, he was great last year. Fantastic last year, but I think that's coming off of like 
up to that point, his career had been entirely a disappointment. Because of injuries. Well, and just, you know, I think he had had a sort of a Saquon career up to that point. Not nearly as much as the hype, though. Yeah, not as much hype, not as crazy of a rookie year. But I think I'm projecting Saqu- like Mixon's year onto Saquon this year. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, I, I like Mixon. I just don't think he's – like, if you look at the track record of his like, entire career, I just don't think – I just don't yeah. think you can put him any higher. Okay. All right. I'm going to go through my six through one. Six for me is Mixon, like Six you through said. one. Yeah. Okay. Let's just get it. Let's get on with it. Six for right. me is uh Mixon. Like I said, he's or like you said, he's really good. I mean, obviously he's been kind of rough the past couple of years, but he's just been injured. He um I remember he had a really good rookie year, right? And then his second year he was like bad, and then his third year he was injured. It's just just been kind of rough. But um if he does stay healthy, and I think that with that improved offense he'll be better. Kamara at five. We'll see if he even like plays at all next year, but when he does play, he's one of the best, you know maybe even the best behind CMC, the best uh, pass-catching running back in the league. He is great, though, can pretty much do everything. Five is Chubb. It's interesting with him. He's one of maybe the most – What? Or, or, sorry, four is Chubb. Um, four is Nicholas Chubb. What? I'm just shocked by that. I Dude. thought you said you were pushing him to be the number one running back in the I was league. joking. Anyways, four is Chubb. Um, probably the most efficient runner in the league. Can be partly attributed to him having the best O line in the league, and it showed with Dearness Johnson and Kareem Hunt doing well, uh, pretty much as good as him when they do play, um, or maybe not as good as him, but you know, pretty good. Uh, CMC is three when he's healthy. He honestly might be the best running back in the league. You know, just him not staying healthy is just a big if, and it's just I don't know. But he's incredible when he's healthy. Two is JT, obviously coming off a great season. Jonathan Taylor, really good O line, so that can be uh, contributed to it, but um, still was averages average like you know mid five five point five yards per carry something last year and he got so many touches so but next year I do, I think he won't nearly get as many touches because the Colts be smart about him and then um number one is Derrick Henry for the Titans was like tenth in rushing yards and played whatever seven games so when you do that and if he stays healthy he's you know unstoppable so yeah. that's that's my list yeah so six I have Dalvin Cook I think. So talented, you know, plagued by injuries, but none other than the base. Was it an ACL or an Achilles? Uh, I want to say it was Achilles. A bad injury to start his career. Been plagued by some more minor ones throughout the rest of his career. Yeah, injuries have been a real problem for him. But when he does play, he's about as consistent as he gets. Well-rounded. Do it all back. You know, he just – he does everything. Um. He's and great in the five, screen game. His like when they throw screens to him, he's like yeah. he's kind of unstoppable. He does, yeah, he does everything well. And then Kamara at five, dude, la- not last year, but the year before, he was yeah. the best running back in the league. Mm-hmm. He was RB one in fantasy. Unbelievable in running and in the passing game. So versatile in a Saints offense that needs him to be very versatile. And so I mean, wasn't great last year, but found to be great again he was hurt last year right or was he hurt? i don't know yeah i mean he played injuries because like he was like questionable every week but like played a bunch kind of thing yeah um four i've got mccaffrey you know the best running back no top two running back when healthy if he's healthy he'll shoot right back up there not the great still a great runner but he's not like in the top tier of like straight ahead runners but the passing game versatility adds so much value um three i've got jonathan taylor i think he's i i would be prepared as colts fans to see him produce a lot less yeah just because lower usage right on the time and I, i i don't think i don't think he i don't think his passing game he doesn't add a whole lot in the passing game while still not being like like he's not dominant he's not a dominant runner and he's not like a great pass catcher so I can't justify putting him ahead of Nick Chubb at two who I think is just so talented in a 
in a rough position sharing the backfield with Kareem Hunt and with a weird coaching staff. Yeah. Um, but the O-line's great, and he's just so consistently good when he's healthy. So I've got him at two. And then Derrick Henry's just dominant. I, I think anybody who doesn't have Derrick Henry as the number one, like, real life, not fans, like, real life running back, he is lying to themselves because he's just that dominant. Yeah. He's unreal. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I mean, I, I guess that's how you just say – it's just how he's co- going to come off his ankle injury. Although I did come back – he did come back in the playoffs, but it wasn't very good. But, um, yeah, so that's our uh, – Quarterback and running back rankings. Um, we have one more quick segment that you guys all know the obscure stat of the day. Um, the I go bo- first. Yeah, both of uh, ours are MLB related, so I'm excited. We 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 didn't give MLB a whole lot of exposure in yeah. the other two three episodes. We've yeah, done we're thinking we're thinking but, we're gonna wait till after the trade deadline. Yeah. yeah, but um, and we'll and we'll give some uh, MLB. We'll talk, actually. What? Yeah, no. Hold on. Just give me one second. Okay, yeah, but first, sure got, speaking sure of MLB, right. okay, speaking of MLB, uh, a couple of trades just went down as we're recording this podcast. Trey Mancini go, going to Houston, um, big first baseman and outfielder slash DH from the, actually, I'm not sure if he played outfield, but uh, first baseman and DH from the O's uh, going to the Astros. And another one, Frank uh, Frankie Montas and Lou Trevino going to the Yankees. The Yankees get some more pitching. Yankees uh, also give up a couple of their top prospects, so a pretty big trade there. But a lot more will go down in the next couple of days, the next two, I guess the next 24 hours almost. So, um, yeah, a lot to go on. But, Nash, are you, are you all ready? Yeah. Okay, right. so in 2004, Barry Bonds had more intentional walks. I think I've seen this, yeah. With 120 intentional walks, not including unintentional walks. So he had more intentional walks then the leader in the American League had total walks. <laughs> Bro, there's so many, like, there's so many Barry Bond stats you can just, that we could do for obscure stats. It's crazy. Like, dude was just actually insane. I mean, I don't even know what to say to that. But I that's, mean, yeah. That's kind of. Special medicine aside, you know, <laughs> yeah. juicing aside, it doesn't matter. That guy was- yeah, dude, dude was insane. That's kind of funny because my stat relates to walks as well. <laughs> but um, it's the damn walk. All right, what's your stat? All right, so you, you know Greg Maddox. Yeah. Bit, the, uh, one of the greatest pitchers of the all pitcher. time. Yeah. yeah. Greg Maddox. All right. Greg Maddox faced twenty thousand four hundred and twenty-one batters during his time in the league. He played like twenty-two years or something like that. In those twenty thousand at bats. Only 310 hitters saw a 3-0 count. And out of those 310 3-0 counts, 177 of them were intentional walks. So 20,000 batters, only 310 3-0 counts, and, like, more than half of them were more intentional than- walks, which is just, like, absurd. So, it's kind of a – yeah. yeah this this is wild. when you actually had to throw yeah, the, like, the four you pitches. <laughs> Mine is cool. I, that's just absurd. Mm-hmm. Both, is, both of them are absurd, I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The the amount, it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel, <laughs> when, when I pitch, I put a batter in a 3 0 count, like, half the time. <laughs> hey, not next um, year, bro. Not next year. <laughs> I'm not going to pitch next year. <laughs> no, you can, you can. All right, uh, let's let's just let's just end this thing before we before All we right. just go on rambling. But uh, as you guys know, a- um, yeah, okay. As you guys know, please subscribe to our YouTube Takes from the Lakes. We're uploading the videos there. Um, this will be available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Overcast, and Stitcher. And um, yeah, I think that's that's about it. Um, Nash. Yeah, I, there's a hurricane brewing in the background. Um, not not literally, it- but. Yes, suppose, literally. Suppose, well, yeah. Yeah. Suppo- no, suppose it's a little that, hurricane um, going on. Anyway, there. we're excited to bring more news. MLB trade deadline coming up. Hopefully mm-hmm. get you some more rankings out in the near future. Um, some new segments potentially. And um, yeah, uh, we'll see you in the next one. Uh, yep, catch you guys later. See ya.